Australia and took his wife and he did all that. But I, really where I want to want you to focus on, and the reason why I'm, I'm, I'm looking at, I'm, I'm taking David's situation and, and, and I'm applying David's situation to a German trial is simply because they didn't commit the crime. Not only did he commit a crime against man, he committed a crime against God. And as I was uh, doing the study, studying in this chapter, one thing that, that really came to <clears throat> one thing that really came to mind was that you don't know what we can take we, we take uh, sexual sins and, and, and stuff like that and we kind of overlook them, but that stuff is serious, man. I mean, really, who in here is not really dealing with a sexual sin right now? Even where you done, done look something, looked at something too hard? Whether you done touched something or been somewhere and done something you ain't had no business being? Whether you done overindulged yourself on the internet, looking at stuff that you don't have no business looking at? So, you know what I'm saying? At some point in your life, I don't even want nobody to raise your hand because, you know what I'm saying? I already know. I raise my hand because you know I've been there and done that. I don't care, you know what I'm saying? Because I know, you know what I'm saying, where God has brought me from, and I know where He's taking me to, and I know where He's delivering me from. So I don't mind, you know, hey, if you don't mind, I can take it a little bit. Y'all heard me say a little bit. <laughs> Amen. But where I want you to, to focus at, you know what I'm saying? Because like I said, David is going through a jury trial. He this is this is what the out out look at this as a jury trial. For the simple, like I said, for the simple reason that he committed a crime. But do y'all know that even during, you know, change, and he was also in some mess, in his mess, in a sexual scene. But even though, you know, what I'm saying while he was in his mess, I want y'all to look at verse two and three. It's, verse two and three says, "It came to pass in an evening time that David arose from off the bed and walked upon the roof of the king's house." And from the roof he saw a woman washing herself, and a woman was very beautiful to look upon. The woman was very beautiful to look upon. And David sent, sent and inquired after the woman, and one said, Is this not Bathsheba, the daughter of Elam, the wife of Uriah the Hittite? With that being said right there, even though you're in the midst of your mess, how many times have you been, been real messy and somebody tried to, tried to give you a way out? This was God giving David a way out of this situation even before it started, even before it transpired into what it transpired to. Hmm? How many times? How many times have you messed up? I've had to been in some situations where God totally shut a situation down and I was still too hard-headed. And I'm not talking about how he just shut a situation down for me over a period of a day. I'm talking about he shut a situation down for me over a period of months. And still when it came back up, I still was like, yeah, come on, let's get it. Amen. For real. Yeah, that's right. You got to, you know what I'm saying, really, just like I said earlier, if you look back over your life, look back over your life and, and, and you know what I'm saying, and God will show you the grace and mercy. He'll show you grace and mercy. That's all you can see, grace and mercy. Man. Did I really escape that bullet? Man, did I really escape that, that car accident? I remember there was a period of time in my life, you remember Mike, when we used to, um, when Christian was in, at the Bravo apartments over there and the ball used to get stuck on top of the building, man, and we used to climb up on top of the building to get the ball. When I look back over there, I'm like, really? I'm hanging off the side of the building, ain't nothing, and you know what I'm saying? And I got Mike, they boosted me up to go get the ball. We three stories up. And I'm hanging off the side of the building, and I'm like, God, I thank you. Because all I had to do was one of my hands slip, and it would have been over for me. You see what I'm saying? Understand that, you know what I'm saying, that even when you're in your mess, God is still trying, God is still there. Even though, when, even when it seems like, like he's not, even when you seem like you might be in a place where, where you by yourself, or nobody else knows what you're going through, what you're going through, God is still there. And he's still knocking on the door, still trying to get your attention. But sometimes we be so caught up in our mess that, you know what? Man, this feels too good. I'm just, I just can't go the other way right now. I got to do this thing. But to make a long story short, we all know that David went through what he went through. He, he ended up laying with Bathsheba. They had a son. And 
But then the end result of that situation was that just because, you know what I'm saying, you go through a situation, God still said not guilty on his behalf. That's right. So David's verdict was not guilty. But it didn't mean that he didn't have to suffer any consequences. You see, a, a jury trial is something that never really, really ends. Because you know what? Even after, even just because, you know what I'm saying, God said not, 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 uh, not guilty on his behalf doesn't mean that, you know what I'm saying, the, the, that the civil court didn't come after him. Because they were coming after him with penalties. He ended up losing, he ended up losing that child that he had with Bathsheba. Hmm? One of his daughters ended up getting getting raped by one of, one of his sons. One of his sons ended up laying on the rooftop with the very same wives that David, you know what I'm saying, that he had. And then he had another son that came back and took over the kingdom after he did and took half and, and almost took half of Israel to hell with him. Just one mistake. But still, even though you're going through those situations, even though you're going through what you're going through, you're going through your jury trial, God is saying, not guilty on your behalf. Amen. Not guilty. Not guilty. The verdict is not guilty. Amen? Amen. So come on, somebody say, not guilty. Not guilty. Not guilty. Not guilty. Not guilty. Mm -hmm. we're, not, we're going to be not guilty. Because of God's grace and because of his mercy. And just to go back, you know, I even forgot to read the base scripture. Y'all, I had y'all turn to it. I was just so excited to get into this thing. Um, <laughs> the base scripture is James 1, verses 2 and 3 says, My brother, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh your patience. So even though, you know what I'm saying, you see yourself going through your mess, Go ahead and start getting happy. Yes. Because, you know what I'm saying, once you get to a, you can get to a place where you enjoy having God in your life, when you enjoy having God in, you know what I'm saying, coming to your situation, you, you enjoy having him in your face, having him guiding you and, and, and showing you, you know what I'm saying, how to, how, to, how to become great. Then, you know what I'm saying, know that when something has happened, mm, here comes elevation. Here comes elevation. Get happy. Here comes the elevation. And even though, you know what I'm saying, just to bring it back back to David, the elevation for, for David was, was that, you know what I'm saying, that he didn't die. Because even in the same situation, when they brought, brought it to David's attention, David spoke death over his own life. He spoke death over his own life. He said, this man should die who did this. And when the man said, you, David was like, who? <laughs> And he immediately fell down on his face. Oh God, I sinned against you. And you see that? The thing was, we have to understand that we're in our mess. And once we realize it, no, no matter what we've done, no matter you know what, I'm saying, what we've been through, no matter you know what I'm saying, how many people we've hurt, we got to go to God first and ask him for forgiveness. And, you know what I'm saying, and everything else will fix itself over time. Amen. Amen? All right, so say the verdict is not guilty. My verdict is not guilty. God is with me. Amen. All right, let's go to. Let's talk about a bench trial. Y'all remember what I said about a bench trial? I said a bench trial is something is, is really when a bench trial happens. A bench trial normally, uh, you know, what I'm saying is really real fast. And you know, what I'm saying in some cases in a bench trial, you know, what I'm saying we, you receive a settlement out of that bench trial. Amen. So let's go to where am I looking? Let's go to Daniel. Let's talk about the three Hebrew boys. I said that. Are, are we familiar with with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Oh, yeah. Throwing them in the in the fiery furnace. Our King Nebuchadnezzar built the, the statue of gold, and he said, you know. Every time, you know, the, the horns start to play, I want you to bow down. When I get, get the DJ to rock in the music, I want you to bow down before the statue. I'm just paraphrasing. I'm just thinking, I'm trying to get right to bow. <laughs> but I consider Shadrach, uh, Meshach, and 
have a nigga, their, their situation, I can see their situation as a bitch trial. Because if you look at, at what they went through, everything that they went through, as far as standing on the word, and that's something that we have to do. We have to continue to stand on the word. Everything that you go through, if you're standing on the word, there's nothing that's going to shake you. Even the miraculous thing, the miraculous thing that ha that happened to them can happen to you as long as you're standing on the word and you'll continue to be faithful. Amen? Amen. Well, let's, well in, uh, in that chapter, I want you to focus on verses 20, verses no, 21. Start at verse 21. Daniel 3, verse uh, 21. And this was, where, where we're picking up here, this was after they had already uh, defied Nebuchadnezzar and, and didn't uh, bow down before the statue. And they said they want to throw them in the fire. And, and right here they were prepared to throw them in the fire. <clears throat> and the session says, verse 21 says, Then these men were bound in their coats and their hose and, and their hats and and their other garments, and were cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent, and these uh, and the furnace exceeding hot, the flame of the fire slew those men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And then these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down, fell down, bound in there in the midst of their burning fiery furnace. All right. This is then King Nebuchadnezzar was astonished and rose up in haste and spake and said unto these counselors, Did not we cast three bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said, said unto the king, O true, O king. All right. So we're, we're on a bench trial. This was fast because they, they bowed down and the king immediately said, oh, I'm gonna throw you out in the fire. I told you I'm gonna do what I said I was gonna do. And so we're gonna do it immediately. We ain't gonna take a couple of days, we're gonna do it right now. So in a bench trial, here's Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego where they're there. They're, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and right, right at, the, at, the, um, at the 21st verse, it says that they're putting clothes on them. So basically what they did was they bound them up. They bound them up and they began to start putting old dry clothes on. To make sure that when they got in the fire, they burn. You know how we do. You you go when you start a fire, you go get some of the oldest, driest stuff. You know what I'm saying? Because it burns fast. So they were basically trying to have a quick execution here. You know, to the point where you know when when the fire hit, it was gonna go, and they could go back and do what they were doing. But think about it. You're sitting there at, at, during your bench trial, and as you're going through. People are beginning to to lie on you. You going through now. People are lying on you, coming up with lies. And you standing there. I know sometimes you've been in a situation like that where people just coming up with lies. You like, where they get that from? Where they get that from? Where they get that from? And and they so they're trying so hard to get a to get a guilty verdict against you. They trying so hard to get that guilty verdict against you. They start throwing their own people up under the bus. my own man up on the bus, you know what I'm saying, just to give a guilty verdict against you, but not you. Why? Because God will step in and, you know what I'm saying, he bring that mistrial in there. All the, even though the evidence, you know what I'm saying, is sitting there. I, I remember one time Pastor Shaw was telling me, you know what I'm saying, about a job that he had. And, and when I was reading this, I began to think about that. He was saying that he went, in, went into a job interview and, and, you know, and he was saying that the, the manager looked at him and he was saying, man, I... He said, right now, I can't even see nothing on this paperwork. All I, you know, all I can do is just give you the job. And see, and this is what God does. Even when you're going through your trial, and you're right here at your bench trial, and everybody is, and they're throwing stuff, and, and even, like I said, they're throwing their own people under the bus. You know what I'm saying? And when God step in, and he step in on the scene, and he come in with that bench trial, he get everything confused. And all they can do is just let you go because why? They say your verdict is not guilty. Yes. Your verdict is not guilty. Amen. Am I, are you with me? I'm not losing yet. Well, no. Amen. 
And just to give you a, a, a scripture that backs it up, 1 Corinthians 10 and 13 says, No temptation has overtaken you except as a common as except as is common to man. But God is faithful who will allow you to be tempted beyond what you're able, but with that temptation will also make the way of escape. Actually, that goes more, more for the for the David situation because you know what? You gotta understand. Um when you dealing with with just different situations of different indulgence, you know, um, I'll just bring you back back to sexual situation. I was talking to my wife about this yesterday. You got to understand that the more and more you indulge in the situation, and the more and more a situation begins to to overtake you, you willing to do anything. You know what I'm saying? To keep that thing under wraps. I'll try to hide. It. Even to the extent of, of, of going to going going to the extent of murdering somebody. How many times, you know what I'm saying, have you seen on TV where, where somebody has been struck out of those drugs and then they killed their mom or daddy, or somebody had, you know what I'm saying, have, have been in some type of sexual sin situation and they trying to cover it up and then they kill somebody, or even somebody that took some money from somebody and they trying to cover it up. So, you know what, the only way that I feel like I can do this is to take your life. But God says, you know what? Even though you're in the midst of that mess, you know what I'm saying? I still got an escape for you. I still got a way out for you. Amen? He says, I'm with you. I'm with you through all of this. If, you know what I'm saying? If you can just get to a place at, at some point in time just to hear me. I'm setting it up for you. I'm setting this thing up so that you can win. Amen? Yes. Amen. <clears throat> all right. Let's go down. We're going to go down to my... The last uh, topic that I'm going to talk about is the uh, the hearing. The last trial is, is, a, is a hearing trial. And I'm sure a lot of us have, have probably been a part of a hearing trial before. Let's go to Genesis 22. We went over this in Bible study. Uh, Genesis 22. And this is a, a hearing trial. Genesis 22, this is where we're talking about Abraham is, is having to sacrifice his son Isaac. God has told him to go and sacrifice his son Isaac. Um, and so I'm uh, equating this one to a hearing trial. Because in a hearing trial, we realized, uh, excuse me, we realized in a, in a hearing trial, uh, we realized that, you know what I'm saying, more, it's a more private situation. You know what I'm saying? It's a more private, you know what I'm saying? Not a lot of people know about it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, and so, you know what I'm saying? I, I, I chose this one because. God had made a request of Abraham that Abraham couldn't tell nobody about. He had to keep it.